We have team coverage tonight on this developing story. Coming up, Liza Lucas will share more of the reactions surrounding today's announcement. Don White caught up with Atlanta Mayor Dickens. But we begin with John Shirick live in Plains with more on the former president and his connection to this legendary small Georgia community. Plains, of course, is Jimmy Carter's lifelong home. Born here October 1st, 1924, grew up on a farm just down the road, graduated from Plains High School, went off to college, Georgia Tech, and then the U.S. Naval Academy, met Rosalind Smith here. They married here in 1946, and he was seven years into his naval career, helping found the nuclear Navy, when in 1953, his father, James Earl Carter Sr., died, and Jimmy Carter made the decision to leave the Navy and come back to Plains to to take over the family's peanut warehouse. And wherever he was in the world, wherever he was across this state, or uh, even in Sumter County, he always came back to Plains, and one of his priorities was to teach Sunday school. And he did so regularly since 1981, after he left the presidency. He came to Maranatha Baptist Church to teach Sunday school, did not stop until 2020. He did not let anything get in the way of his Sunday school lessons. Not recent health challenges, not cancer, not a broken hip. He always came back to Maranatha Baptist Church until the challenges of the COVID pandemic and his age were just too much. But people would come from around the world and across the country to listen. How many of you think if you do a good thing for just one other person, it would make America a better country. Is that complicated? No, it's not difficult. Jimmy Carter sharing his faith in church as he did so often everywhere, everywhere he went in his own way. And as messages of support come in from around the world for Jimmy Carter and his family now, no one outside his family, it's safe to say, has felt a greater impact and loves Jimmy Carter more than his friends and neighbors here in Plains. Jeff. John, when I first introduced you and I saw you pop up on the screen with that backdrop, I, I felt a little bit of a lump in my throat. It's one of the most famous shots, live shots in television of the American 20th century in politics. That shot where you're standing right now was so famous for all the networks in the mid, late 70s, all the way into 1980. It's a, it's a very symbol of the man in many ways. And it was at this spot where Jimmy Carter returned after leaving the White House January 20th, 1981. He flew straight from Washington here to Plains, and there were hundreds of people here to welcome Jimmy and Rosalind back home. And so it's been a very, he was in tears and gratitude. Uh, it's been a very important place for him. And of course, he started the Carter Center in Atlanta in 1982. And when they built the facilities, he and Rosalind had an apartment there in Atlanta where they would live as they went around the world fighting disease, promoting human rights, monitoring elections, consulting with world leaders. But again, Plains was his home. People would see him riding his bicycle throughout Plains. He would run errands and then just down the street at his home, he would uh, paint. He, he was a carpenter. He was a poet. He was a writer, a historian, and, and he consulted world leaders from his home here in Plains. He felt most comfortable here at home. And John, you're about 50 yards away from Brother Billy's gas station. And you think about his role through those Carter years in the White House and Miss Lillian and his sister Ruth and it just goes on and on. It is incredibly vivid for those of us who are old enough to follow the Carter presidency at that time and his amazing ascension from Plains. Sometimes people say, what is Plains like who haven't been there, who are not from the South? If you really want to get a sense of how amazing the United States is and how amazing Jimmy Carter's life has been, spend some time in that area of South Georgia so much grinding poverty, so much that he has risen uh, toward and through to become the 39th president of the United States and all the moving parts in his life uh, of, of we will be talking about for days and days and weeks and weeks and, and certainly for years and years in this country.